Hi, I'm Jerome. How's it going today? Uh, I'm super excited to get this project going, so I'm going to start working on it. A while back, I was designing a WWVB receiver, and what that is is uh, an atomic clock. You've heard of the atomic clocks. So let me show you the design I kind of came up with. It's on a it's on a prototype board done in kind of the dead bug style on some copper clad. So let's go ahead and take a look. So let's take a look at the circuit board. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on the circuit board itself. I'd rather talk about it in while looking at the schematic because it'll be a little easier to understand. But do note that it's powered off a nine volt battery. It's got a linear regulator that powers all the circuitry on it. There's two op amps. There's an LED. There's a couple of trim pots here that we'll talk about in a little bit. And also there's a JFET stage right in here. I've kept it all very small, very tight, so that the parasitics aren't too bad. And at 60 kilohertz, you know, we're not talking about real high frequency either. So in fact, we're, we're barely out of the audio frequency. Uh, so anyway, here's the antenna. It's a ferrite rod with some copper windings. And then it resonates with the green capacitor right here and they're tuned for 60 kilohertz to, to resonate at 60 kilohertz and so that makes it more sensitive to the, the what's coming through the air at 60 kilohertz now it's not a very good antenna i will give you that it is not very good um, the other thing i'd like to point out is that it's super sensitive let's see if i can Yeah, sometimes, yeah, see? See how it's kind of flickering and stuff? Maybe may, maybe you're catching a little bit of that. So it's not very good all the time. So that's something I want to try and fix when we come to, to, to laying it out on the board. You're really making it work well. And see, now it's on. And there might be a portion of the... Of the code that is on. Another thing I'd like to point out is that most of the time you see two different blinks. There's a short black or a short off with a long on and then there's a long on, and then there's a long off with a short on. And so that's the difference between a zero and a one in the binary communication that it's doing. Um, and there's a couple other, you know, if it's on all the time for one second or off all the time for one second, that means something else. Um, so it's not strictly binary, but it's mostly a binary on off sort of transmission like that. There is one last thing I want to point out on this uh, circuit board. This single point ground right here connects this ground to this ground. And when we go look at the schematic, you'll kind of get a better understanding why, but if you also notice, there's a cut in the ground planes. Now, from an electrical perspective and on the schematic, these are the same voltage. However, uh, from a layout perspective, they are not the same voltage. Um, they're the same voltage value at this point, but the, the good thing about this is that it isolates current from like this LED turning on at 10 milliamps. It isolates the current from making voltage changes in this region of the the circuit and I actually started out not having it this way and when I started playing around with it I realized there was a lot of noise coming in from different places and affecting this input circuit which was causing a lot of like this negative feedback and a lot of noise and just a lot of frustration came out of that but I realized quickly that this needed to be cut and provided a single point ground so that currents can't flow through here. Another thing we did to help stabilize that voltage is we added a big RC time constant here so that the voltage rail really doesn't change a whole lot, at least not at the 60 kilohertz that we're interested about. So now let's go look at the schematic and see how these things are labeled within the schematic. All right, so here's the schematic, and there's definitely a lot going on here. 
and so I want to just kind of walk you through it. Uh, I'm not going to go too far into details, but I want you to have an idea of what each circuit and each, what each stage is doing. So, I zoom in here. This is a pretty standard power supplied linear regulator. The 9 volt battery would be here, and it provides an output of approximately 5.3 volts. Um, and that's about all I have to say about it. It's pretty standard stuff. Most people watching my channel should know about that type of linear regulator. Um, same sort of thing, just fine tuned to get the 2.5 volt ground reference out. Um, it's, it's, it's more of a reference voltage than a ground reference, is what I'd say. But um, for all practical purposes, this is 2.5 volts. Um, for this circuit, it's also too, uh, sorry, it's just too grounded and it's not used at all. All right, here's the first input stage. And this is where the antenna is connected and it resonates with this capacitor. And if you do the math, that means this antenna is approximately a one millihenry uh, antenna, uh, inductor really. Um, to make it resonate at 60 kilohertz, which is a frequency of interest. Um, it is important to note this RC time constant is a very, very good. I mean, this voltage rail is not going to be changing with variations of this input voltage. Now, this input voltage shouldn't really change much anyway. Well, at 60 kilohertz, it could change quite a bit because the LM317 isn't the greatest uh, linear regulator on the planet, but it is a pretty decent re re linear regulator. However, I still want to put in this RC time constant here just to make this voltage a bit more rock solid. Um, something to point out, recall that I have that single point ground. I usually draw these sorts of lines on my schematics for very specific purposes to indicate that, that like this node and this node, all these devices need to be connected as closely and tightly as possible. Um, and that's really important, especially for this circuit, since there's uh, not a lot of signal coming in here. This signal is going to be on the order of probably 100 microvolts-ish or so. Depends on how far away you are, but where I live, um, I believe it's around 100 microvolts or so. Anyway, so this amplifier gives you about 20 dB per, uh, uh, 20 dB of gain, and it's just a co common source amplifier. It's a pretty, uh, excuse the pun, it's a pretty common amplifier that's used quite a bit. I've got a two-pole high-pass filter, just a discrete one, simple, just throw it in there. What that does is it rolls off that low frequency stuff that may have coupled in from you know the VCC or um, you know they're really sh maybe it the antenna is not very efficient at low frequencies but maybe the antenna did couple in some uh, pick up some 60 Hertz or something so this should block a lot of the 60 Hertz um, so then this amplifier is basically a non-inverting amplifier at DC and then at AC you'll have current pass through here and what this does is it provides you a lot of gain I mean a lot of gain with pretty low value resistors and stuff and so there's some pluses and minuses to why I use this circuit but primarily I used it because the output would be right at 2.5 volts now, I'll probably redesign this circuit for a couple different reasons, but I think the goal here is to probably get this to be outputting some voltage. I'll probably move this uh, trim pot to over here, probably to this resistor, or possibly to this resistor. That way we can set the gain on this stage. I think that's probably a better solution for this. Um, but, but we'll see. We'll probably try a couple of different things. 
Um, and so this is the second stage. If you do 100K divided by 280, you end up with about 50 dB or so of gain. Um, and then here's the final stage. And this final stage has 40 dB of gain or up to 40 dB of gain. And so it's very useful for a lot of different things, but um, its main purpose is to just do a half wave rectification. Note that this signal is going above and below 2.5 volts because that's where our reference is. It's going above and below 2.5 volts. And then when it goes below 2.5 volts, because this is node is referenced to ground, it's actually going to be going below ground. It's going to be going above and below ground at zero volts. Well, because this is powered by zero volts, it can't actually provide an output because it can no longer go negative at some point. Um, but it can go positive. So you end up half wave rectifying the circuit. That half wave rectified signal ends up going into this little chopper circuit, which basically is a sample and hold sort of thing. It samples it and holds it up high just long enough to be able to turn on this LED. And the way it turns it on is when that voltage rises up to like 3 point, well, 2 point, I'm sorry, 3.2 plus 0.9, which makes it about four. So whenever this voltage rises up pretty close to five volts, then it turns on this transistor, which turns on the LED, which also turns on this transistor, which provides feedback current here to drive this transistor harder. Well, that means that this has to provide less current at some point to be able to turn it off. So what you end up with is a nice pretty square wave out here to drive into, into a microcontroller at this node, but you also get this LED indicator. Now this circuit will probably completely go away in this. In fact, this one might go away. I have to look a little closer at how good the analog uh, input stage is on the microcontroller I plan to use and how uh, and how I really want to start decoding it. Do I want to really watch this half wave rectif rectified signal? Um, would I rather just maybe we get rid of two stages? Um, that's a viable option too. So if we get rid of this, we get rid of this, and then we also could potentially get rid of this, and then we're just watching the A to D converter in the microcontroller watching the output of this signal. And so that's a viable option too. And that's probably what I'll try and do ultimately. We'll probably do a board spin to really see if it works. Um, and that's probably what we'll do. Um, what else? I think that's about it for the schematic. So just a quick note, there's about 20 dB of gain here, 50 dB of gain here, and 20 dB, uh, 40, up to 40 dB of gain here. So that ends up being up to 110 dB of gain. And so going backwards, well, you, you can do the math. I'm not going to do it, but it ends up being a lot of gain. So you have to have very low noise here and pretty low noise here to be able to start pushing this guy really good and hard and being able to actually turn on and off this LED. This is not trivial stuff to do. Um, you know, sure, there's a lot of folks that can do it, but it is not trivial. And it's, uh, it's a lot of fun for me to do, to, to design each one of these stages and thinking about the frequency domain and DC and all those sorts of things. I really enjoy this sort of stuff and that's why I'm doing it with you. So what are we gonna do with this project? So I've got a few ideas 
But one of the ideas is definitely to interface this with the microcontroller and start being able to actually decode the time. That's something I really want to do. Um, I've got some ideas about maybe selling this product. Um, I'll probably for sure put it out as uh, some sort of uh, collective common license of some sort. I have a particular microcontroller I'd really like to use. Um, so I'm waiting to get it through the mail. I don't want to spill the beans too much on that quite yet. Um, but anyway, I, I'm hoping that I can make some of these and provide them to people for uh, different types of uh, development. This could really be useful in an Internet of Things sort of thing. There's a lot of talk in Internet of Things right now about, well, how do you know what time it is? And so this is a good way to know exactly what time it is without having to be connected to the Internet. Um, because a lot of places, they don't want to be connected to the Internet. And this is a great way to not be connected to the Internet and be able to receive the time and be able to sync all your devices up so they're all talking on the same, um, at the same time, or at least very close to it. Close enough that humans can't recognize it anyway, because most of the stuff in the Internet of Things is turning on the lights, turning off the lights, making sure the garage door opens, well, what time is it, you know, all those sorts of things. And, you know, for a lot of companies, they really want to take on these things, but they don't want to have any connection to the outside world for security purposes or... Uh, mostly for security purposes, but occasionally for, you know, I'm out in the boonies, you know. I, I can't have any connection to the Internet. So, anyway, um, I think that's it for this video. I think I'll go release it and get it out. And we'll do another video on this. Uh, the next video, we'll probably, I'll probably go ahead and do the schematic. Probably do some layout, uh, get most of the layout done, and probably talk you through some of the circuitry again, uh, at least some of the changes. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. So, peace. Later.